Hello there, Smite fans. Welcome to our third game of coverage today. This one's coming to you out of the round of four. It's Snipe Gaming going up against Team Dignitas. And today, your heroes in the blue trunks in the bottom side of the mini-map, the pristine side of the map in the left side of your spectator UI. It is Snipe Gaming in North America. It's going to be in Continentia and Allied, combining for the Geb and Apollo duo lane. Shing is going to be your jungler on Thanatos, Wolfie in the solo lane is tier. And the one and only Nick in the mid lane as Habwa. You know, second seed Snipe has a long way to go. They defeated them last week, though. Team Dignitas, your second seed is going to be the red team. Top side of the mini-map, right side of the spectator UI. We're going to have Zatman go into the duo lane there as Neath Shadow Q going to follow him uh, as the support player playing Sun Wukong. Last is going into the jungle with Freya the best going mid lane with Ra. And finally, Anatoly going to be playing the solo lane baby, Vamana. So, Vamana versus Tier, the solo lane matchup, uh, one we've seen before. One that goes to Tier until Vamana gets his, well, Bart. extended core items. What do you got? My favorite. Your favorite. Sundays? Look at the, look at, look at the left side. They're going to oh, go yeah. steal. You invade every game. Actually, they're running off the mark here. Uh, they will walk through a ward likely to see this. Will they turn around here? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, yes, they they're going to they spot him out. They're going to spot him out. The head of the gods going to be used. This is going to be a counter steal. If Geb can get there fast enough, he's going to get in. The hand is going to be good. The steal is thwarted by the, the defensive ward. Oh, man, I love this game. That also means that your left side camp is still available to be picked up at any point by these teams, so look for those respawns to be a little bit off. Uh, bottom side, nobody able to get blue there. Lassus and the baby there picking up that buff and then scooping right over. Now there's going to be an experience difference here uh, for the blue team. They did manage to pick up that, that uh, mid camp there. Shing is going to be the only person in that lane to be level 2 right now. Yeah, he is, and, and that, that's a good guy to have. It gives him his uh, his silence, uh, yes, his silence is slow, plus his burst damage. So that makes him a much more formidable target to deal with when trying to aggress into him. The tier fearless combination also has the knockup component now. It looks like Snipe is is maybe gonna let Dig take us. No, Dig just trying to sniff out if there was indeed a attempt to take that blue buff. Now it's gonna be Lass's force to kind of safely farm this, and that should be the lane advantage that gives Snipe the blue buff. That was a really beautiful play there coming out from Snipe. They baited the attempt, then got back the lane quick to beat the experience loss, which finally gets Wolfie that blue buff. Shing at this point likely going to leave as well. Actually, I think he's looking for an opportunity here. He's going to be walking up. Nope, back into lane. The top side blue buff's going to be taken as well. Uh, they're going to hit level three, but at this point, Snipe does have a small lead in the dual lane, as you see Shing hitting level four. Yeah, it looks like Snipe is really more focused on pushing this wave into the tower and trying to deny some XP and gold to Dignitas, uh, Anatoly, and Lassus, but not going to be successful. Lassus is Freya a little bit too good at stacking those creeps up with the AoE damage from Pulse. I'm watching the mid lane here, and Shing just kind of comes in, and this is Shing's strategy. He goes to lane, and he just eats experience from his other laners to try to get it as big as possible, and then he ganks. A lot of other junglers are always looking for farm. He is looking for kills. Now, uh, mid camp going to spawn here on the right side in just a second. Level 3, Lassus is going to take a water spout for his trouble, and he's going to rotate back. That left side camp is not going to be spawning for a while. The contention happened at the blue buff on the bottom left side of the map. So this oh. just in D2F does take down Denial, Brandon. Wow, C2F coming onto the scene, taking out Clash and Slash, the fifth place seed, and now taking out Denial as well. Are we seeing the start of a new uh, franchise here in the North American scene? <laughs> Pernicus and Mini Pern, man. They're, they're doing work. Kiki Star, uh, now called uh, Troy Honesty, and the rest of them, man. They've done a great job so far. That's two major teams. They're going to go up against COG next. Uh, but right now, the story is Snipe versus Dignitas. Experience difference majorly in favor right now of Snipe. Uh, Dig does have a small gold lead, however. Uh, no first blood, no goal theory, no objectives just yet. Three-minute mark. You see the rotation are coming out in Continentia. Actually, a little bit slow on this one. It looking like a 3v4 as we get the rotation from Apollo as well. And Continentia does have Cataclysm available. There it is! Death Slice going to be a little bit too early, though. They're not going to be able to combo for full damage potential, but he gets the damage off. Last is now in trouble. Banish on cooldown for a few more seconds. There's the Whirlweaver. Last is low. Last is caught. Allied finds the kill. 
That's such a dangerous lineup. Dealing with that chase down from Thanatos, and they have the ability to cover distance as well. Havua can stare at his speed. Apollo has the global ultimate, making him quite fast as well. And anything that's not a high health target, the ultimate knockdown or the ultimate crashing in from the Thanatos, if it hits and sets up the 3 1 combination, will take you down to about 25% HP, which you saw there right onto Lassus, and the Apollo crash should be enough to finish you. So, all in all, a, a very, very nicely executed and drafted team from Snipe. Now, Nick really keeping up the work there as well. You can see he didn't use Crushing Wave, but he got a few splashes off. He got the knock up. He threw down the Atlas for the slow. Everything was there for them. And the, just a great communication coming out from Snipe and the beautiful rotation coming out from Allied using that global presence even after he didn't even need to use it. They find the first two kills of the game and now Snipe with a pretty demanding lead. Yeah, Snipe, they, so of that lead, uh, about 700 gold, it's really experience, so 2,500 experience going their way after that fight. They were to clean up some camps and get some lane farm here. So Dignitas definitely, uh, you know, starting to dig a hole for themselves. It, it, the experience is, is really the more important aspect of the early part of the game. Very, very valuable to get yeah. those base levels on characters. Gives them extra HP plus additional scaling in their prime stat. So it's, it's definitely worth... Uh, it's worth it for Snipe. These rotations have been good. They're up two kills, and about five minutes into the game to have the four to 5,000 gold I'm sorry, experience lead, if they can continue to you know grow this, is going to be really, really important for them, as Dignitas has the better late-game team, I think, no question. Even though, well, I, I, maybe not. Thanatos, ah, man, Habwa, and Apollo, this is good. I mean, if this game goes late, it's going to be a complete bloodbath, because Vamana is a nightmare late-game, and so is the Preya. Zatman will be we'll able to do quite a bit of damage. Already has yeah. the Creeping Curse ready to shut oh, down man. Anatolia as they get in the mid-game looking for that weakening. Left side mid-camp again uh, going to snipe there as they can just continue pushing up that lead. Bottom side blue. I'm sorry, mid lane. Check this out. Diving in. He's going to miss. Great reactionary Valkyrie's discretion there. He finds the banish. I think Lass is getting too big for his britches here, but they're going to find a kill on the Shing. Guaranteed. Nick using that ult a little bit too early. And last man, I don't understand how he gets away with these things. Incredible. It's the it's the don't think do mentality there for Lassus and just always finds a way to escape right out of there. Now gonna go secure the blue buff for Anatoly here on the right side. Anatoly able to steal it away from Wolfie on the uh, the bottom side of the map there. So there will be a bit of a solo lane advantage here. Anatoly in fact uh, also up by uh, you know a few hundred experience sitting at level eight while Wolfie's still at about seven and a half here. Should be picking up level eight on this wave. Yeah, there it goes right there, the double power cleave. But he's at least a level behind at this point, and he's taken some damage. You look at the build, uh, Wolfie has started Mystical Mark. Should be finished pretty soon. He's about 400 gold out. Uh, Anatoly, uh, actually only about 300 gold out, but it should be considered that he has already finished Sprint, uh, whereas Wolfie has opted for Boots 1 and Blink 1. Uh, mid camp here, unfortunate for Shing. Would have had a kill there, uh, but he didn't quite land the uh, death site so the decoy is going to get burned down here mid camp's going to spawn and it's going to go directly to snipe but the somersault cloud was used a small victory for snipe yeah, so, I mean, you know, more experience going their way, uh, but it, Dignitas was able to pick some more up. Anatoly bullying that lane, plus the uh, left side creep wave pushed all the way to the tower by Zatman. Gets back some of that experience advantage, and Dignitas has actually uh, drawn even now on goal. Surprising, actually, given the fact that they're still uh, down a kill, but the experience difference still majorly in favor of Snipe. Wolfie finally hitting level 9, so you know it's not the Anatoly uh, Wolfie lane. That's still in favor of Dignitas over there, but you can see the best right now, uh, level 9. Nick uh, sitting pretty much the same thing. Not too much of a difference here. Knockup going to go through here. Last looking for the Banish. He's going to find Shing again, but here is Incontinentia. He's looking for the Cataclysm. Double Hand's going to take that down, and another mid-camp goes to snipe unbelievable you know i think it's what now seven almost eight minutes into the game we've yet to see an ultimate come out from best and there's been a couple banishes in traffic that he could have at least thrown out an ultimate there and put some pressure out but it seems like they're really wanting to secure kills with that ultimate or at least have a good yeah. attempt for a kill when using it and i think the geb is the threat here as to why you don't see that going out because if they try to engage into geb with his ultimate available it's a big aoe stun and even though there's not necessarily the biggest AoE ultimates over here on Snipe to follow it up with, Crushing Wave should still be able to do just tremendous amounts of work if they get a favorable setup. Well, Nick already has finished shoes in the match, right? That's Penetration. He has the Vamp Shroud for an extra 20 damage as well. And you can see he has 
full beads as well. That's double splashes. Uh, that's pretty quick knockups, and then of course uh, Atlas into the crushing wave. That's a lot of damage, and you can see right now he is top farm on his team at 4,600. But Anatoly actually is leading the path, uh, closely followed by the best at almost 47. Yeah, this game will be a Vamana game. Um, so, watching from home, you're looking at about that 28 to early 30s minute mark. Wow, that crushing wave actually going to hit Shadow Q as Nick goes under the tower now. Looks like it's going to be a die from Dignitas. Anatoly will be able to find it. Last is using that Valkyrie's discretion to secure the ultimate Wukong DK going in to take the tower now. Uh, so a kill secured onto Hubwa. Important kill. Tough to lock down with the beads three as well, but they're able to do it. But kind of going back to look, look for Anatoly at about 30 minutes to take the game over. And uh, if, if Lassus is able to kind of carry the team there with the early Freya game damage and let Anatoly pick it back up for the hyper late game until Freya gets six slotted, uh, you could see Dignitas having a good chance of taking this one. But if, if Snipe is able to control the, the tempo and pace of the game with the Shing rotations and ganks, it's going to get ugly quickly for Dignitas. So what I love right there is Snipe is so in tune to timers. That's like the, the entire game plan is be exactly at everything's respawn. So they decide to rush down the best 20 seconds before the mid camp comes up because why would Shane be there? Why would Incontinentia be there? Let's just group up and take them down and use their strategy against them. And that's the high level chess mentality that comes out from Dignitas, which is why right now, if you look at the charts, you see them have a small gold lead still behind an experience, uh, but they were very far behind in the beginning. And you can still see them making plays because they're using snipe against each other. And that is such a great way to play the game. Blue buff leashed over here on the left side. Uh, Snipe not able to secure that. Hand of the Gods, I believe, has been used by Incontinentia at this point. So it's going to be a little bit of an awkward secure coming out later. But look at the ward coverage from Dignitas. The Meridian there right across the mid lane going from the tier ones on each side. They have very, very good vision of Snipe. And they want to spot these Thanatos rotations that look like before they get punished. I'm just so... Um Again, they're going for it. This time it was taken by Dig, but the Cataclysm is good. There's the Shockwave. They're going to chase that man down here. Ally does have Across the Sky available, but the moves, a few shots, the shield to block the knockup. Incontinential. That man, though, might get out, but Nick's in there. Where's the Crushing Wave? Going to hit three. It's a big Crushing Wave coming out up in the air now. Valkyrie's discretion is last. Not enough secure Incontinential. Ally's ult a little bit off the mark. Will he pay for his life? No, dashing out of there. Best needs to find this beam. Ally's going to juke it. Now in execute range. Thanatos rotating in. Oh, Best, you poor, poor soul. Crashing down is the god of death. And that is another one for his coffers. He reaps the soul of the great chicken. And now a gold for your attempt in the works potentially here for Snipe. Uh, I think actually he's going to back out and try to save that mid tower. Anatoly doing some work there. But finally, we're seeing the presence come out. Ally right there using across the sky to chase down Incontinentia, not only stopping his teammate from getting knocked back and allowing him to get back into that fight, but then saving him from certain death and then saving himself by just rolling out, I guess. I mean, he got out of there super fast. And you, I, if I was Lassus, I would be frustrated, man. Trying to chase down Geb is just a nightmare. Uh, so hard to deal with, and he can't be knocked up, which is particularly good against Wukong. And, and really there, the, the play of that engagement, though, was a questionable one. <laughs> At best, Ally crashing back in with about one HP, <laughs> and getting about one tick of that ultimate damage off, and then running away for his life. He does survive there, though, so great play by Allied Senpai. Uh, we're calling him Senpai. I mean, Allied, Allied Sama, would you prefer that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Mid lane, um, out of that engagement, they do gain three kills, but the damage has been done to the tower. Of course, Dignitas can answer by taking that back pretty quickly. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to force Nick to kind of hover around here. Um, left side, we're seeing a ward come out. Um, both have I3 at this point, so that's getting rotated. And Shing going to grab that speed buff. Uh, his ultimate is back up as well. Uh, you can see both the Boots and the Jotun's Wrath are level 2. They're looking for that cooldown reduction to get more ults and inevitably more death sites off to try to maximize that damage. Yeah, the cooldown reduction of Jotun's Wrath should help him out, but he is sitting on only the Boots too, so a little bit lean in terms of movement speed. Going to be looking for his number 2 uh, to set that up, I believe. Right side here, it's going to be a leap out from Wolfie. Forced to use the Lawbringer to... Evade the damage from Lassus. Uh, take a look at Lassus' build. Has he turned the corner yet? No. And Fatalis not done yet. Really, you look for Freya to have a Fatalis done, plus, you know, building into her next damage item to really where she's going to start taking over the, you know, later stages of the early game. Look at this, Bart. 
they're sneaking the goal period. Why would they be going for it right now, taking this hostage thinking? There's no way. You actually saw Shadow Q start to walk left, and then he walks back to the right side. Three 1,500 gold coming the way of Snipe. Wow. Night. What a clever timing. They knew they had it cleared out as well. Interestingly enough, Allied was tanking that over Incon. Not sure exactly why there, but, uh, you know, he's able to recoup that health pretty quickly well, with the death yeah, toll. Yeah, I mean, Devourer's Gloves, death toll, not to mention the Geb Shield. He, and he got it done pretty quick. I mean, by the time Incon actually got over there, it was already down 25%. Yeah, a, a, a very, very clever timing there from Snipe. And a little surprised Dignitas didn't sift that one out. There was, you know, Zapman had pushed the lane up for free on the left side. They knew that they weren't contesting the mid camps. A little bit, a little bit curious there. It seems like Dignitas still was maybe... noticed. I, I think that they were trapped. I think they caught themselves in their own little trap. Uh oh, she's a lot of trouble here. He's going to get piled on. And this is a, a dead bird, man. Down goes Thanatos wrapping himself in the wings and going back to the realms of deck. Well, speaking of death, left side, Allied in some trouble here. He does have his ultimate available to him. You see him just trying to figure out how to get this tower done. He's a few more shots. I think Allied's going to give his life for this one. I don't see him getting out of this. Valkyrie's discretion is going to hit three, and that's going to be good. I don't know if he thinks that's worth it or not, but he definitely made the play to get it done. Um, so overall, I mean, we see the first, uh, rather the second tower getting taken down. Uh, Anatoly trying to answer back for the tower that Wolfie took here. He's about to take some damage, but Wolfie doesn't really have the mana to follow up the kill. Yeah, he doesn't have any way to really lock down the Vamana effectively either. And, and yeah, I mean, I think knowing Allied, he's he's screaming that that was worth it, even even uh, even if it was or was not. I mean, in, in terms of golden experience, uh, I, it's going to be a, a no, uh, looking at the chart dipping back down pretty heavily after they actually secure that kill on him. He was worth quite a bit. Uh, sitting at one and one and zero at level thirteen, he was he was you know a, a pretty worthwhile kill and really the uh, the thing to look at here and this is immense. I'm not sure how we missed it. Uh, as Thanatos is going to go ahead and ult down onto the blue buff there. Look at Incontinentia's levels. Sitting at level fourteen. Oh Shadow Q at, at eleven. I don't uh, know Shane, what's going on with Incon, but yeah, Shane a lot of trouble. Again is in trouble. Oh my God, Shane getting caught for the second time uh, in the last two minutes. I mean, he also died early on. Three of the five kills on Dignitas right now are given to Captain Shing there as he gets picked off once again. Allied and Shadow Q trying to fight for the Shadow Q, strangely missing his hand of the gods. And again, the blue buff's going to go to Allied as he rotates back over to deal with Zatman's push. There has been a lot of free farm for Zatman this game, though. I mean, a lot of space has been made really by Snipe, in fact. You know, they, yeah. they've kind of elected to leave Zatman alone on this island, and they've gone and wanted to pressure the other lanes, and, and they've found some towers, certainly, as a result of it. But Zatman's got a lot of free farm, and, and he is, you know, sitting on a pretty nice level advantage. Or, or, or He's about 14 and a half, Allied just hitting 14. Gold, a little bit in favor of Allied after that Gold Fury, but you take the Gold Fury and towers out of it. Zatman is farming a lot, and, and that Gold will eventually even out uh, from the towers once if Dignitas is able to, you know, put some, some pushes together and, and take the towers as well, or even a later Gold Fury. And, you know, if, if they're able to take a tower or two and a gold three, look for Zatman to be a, a pretty big damage factor in these fights. But we also have Lassus right now. Four, one, and one. The Fatalis is done. He's got Shoes of the Magi for Pen. Demonic Grip's already level two. And not to mention, he has a full fist already on mm. top of a level one Aegis, man. Right now, that Freya is nothing to mess with. Yeah, I think that's how I should be looking to fight with this, you know, those, uh, the kind of the qualities you mentioned of Fran. And as I was mentioning earlier, this is where she looks to take over the later stages of the early game. Working towards her next damage item, it's going to be Demonic Grip and getting the Fatalis up and running with the early pen from the boots. Has the, well, it's not really a true 100 to 0 so much as that she has enough damage to take out really any target on the map right now if she can find someone. And it's got to be Shing that she's hunting for. Incontinentia in mid lane helping Nick hold the lane for now. Shing's here as well trying to leech some experience. Nick level 17 currently 1-1-4. One, one highest level in the game. Highest farm as well by a very small amount. Crushing wave available. In fact, all 10 ultimates are available as Incontinentia rotates literally back over towards the left side. Uh, Allied taking some damage there from Zatman. 15-15 uh, and 15 versus 15-12 and 12 in the solo lane. Right lane we're going to see, uh, or rather dual lane, Right lane, we're going to see Wolfie just trying to hold on to this tower, but he's going back to the base. I think he's committed to letting this one go. Zatman rotates in. Anatoly just going to take this one down. Yeah, they're going to take that pretty easily. Left side, you know, a little bit of poke going back and forth here, but I mean, I think that the story of this game so far has been Incon putting on a clinic of Guardian play. It's finding yeah. so much experience on this map.
you know, people are always asking the casters, you know, who do we think is the best in each role? And it's so hard to say because everyone has such a unique play style. But when you think about Incontinentia's actual support play, it's incredible. I mean, he's always watching out for every point of contention. He's always supporting his team with heals and shields. And look how fast right there he was in that purge. That was incredible. He immediately throws it on so that Shin can get up into the air and get out. But again, that's going to be another ultimate there. Um, Covering death wasted uh, for Shing in a defensive measure. I mean, he's kind of starting to fall off here a little bit. Yeah, in this game, Shing going to be going for the Heidel Leviathan over, I think, probably the more popular pickup of the Magi's Blessing in this slot for Shing, uh, or rather for Thanatos. Get the get the pen and the, the CDR working on the Jotun's Wrath and the Ninja Tabi, uh, and, then, and then go ahead and transition into a defensive item. Usually you see Magi's, but without a lot of single target hard lockdown for Dignitas, it's going to be the Heidel Leviathan, which is going to help him out against those, uh, those physical and magical gods. As a Gold Fury, this is going to be a big Cataclysm DM. Incontinence is in the thick of it. He's got a lot of damage done. The Gold Fury's getting super low. He's just trying to take it long enough, and he does find it. Shadow Q, nowhere to be found in the back, back line. Allied is going crazy, dodging ultimate shot after ultimate shot. He actually dodges three, and there's Incom with the shield up into the air. Where is he going to land? You know Shake's looking for it. He comes back in. He finds the best. The Death Scythe is going to be good, but he falls directly into a beam. But Wolfie comes in. Blink. Fearless power cleave, fearless power cleave. He's going for it, but he doesn't quite find it. He finally gets the kill, but Wolfie's, Wolfie's gonna wow. get him. Wow, he's gonna. No, he's he's this. getting chased down. Best. They got the slow. Right. You respect that. I respect that. The mighty chicken able to take him down there. A uh, a bit of a bloodbath. Two for two trade. It's gonna be Wolfie and Ching for Lassus and Zapman. I think the important kill here is onto the hunter of Zapman, but he is not running Heartseeker, so Devourer's Love's not gonna be resetting. He's gonna come out. With quite a bit of damage and a vengeance. Best pretty low here. Nick looks like he wants to initiate. It's going to be an ultimate coming through. Incon's going to be in position for a knockup on a Tolly. Do they have the damage? Nick's going to have to hit two spells here to kill Tolly, and that's going to be free. No problem. They're going to chase down the baby just like that. No more mana available to get out. Best trying to do what he can. The rollout has started. Shadow Queen needs to get in position. Won't find the knockup. Will Incon go deep? It looks like he will. He's going to actually Cataclysm again. Knockup onto the best. Ron, a lot of trouble, but going to use his movement speed to get out of there. Snipe, however, can now mount a push on the back of this advantage. You know, the speed of light was still active for a little while longer, so he does manage to create enough distance to get out of there. Uh, but Snipe benefiting in that one. Uh, again, Incontinentia, a name that we're saying a lot today, not only finds two amazing support plays and two great ultimates to deter the push from Dignitas, but he maintains the Gold Fury aggro and then steals it away for a free 1500. Snipe now pushing up towards the mid lane. We see Shadow Q, Lassus, the best, all rotating in. Allied's going to take some damage there. Incom shields himself as he comes in. Shadow Q's taking some damage, but so far not oh. enough. Shing's going up. Wolfie gets in there. He's going to find the knockup with the fearless combination. Crashing into Shing doesn't matter. Target already dead. Now it's going to be tier into the back lines. He's going to find pressure on the best. That means the tower is undefended now as Wolfie just wrecks havoc. But the shield not enough to really keep him too, too healthy here. As he's starting to take a lot of damage in Conforce to roll out of this one. But the tower does go the way of Snipe. And now that's a Gold Fury and a tower in short succession for them. Wolfie is going to go deep and make some room for his team to escape and find a kill in the process as Allied Sama comes through for the kill. <laughs> Sama now, he's trying to get out. The moves were used. Offensive backflip, but there's the shield. Anatoly, big baby, slamming the bat down. He's going to get that. Actually, Zapman's going to be able to pick that one up. And on the back of it, the best throwing out the searing pain just in case a tier one tower was taken here. But it looks like they're pressuring a tier two now. Anatoly going to get silenced. Zapman silenced. Shing dodging beams. He's dodging shots. He's dodging umbrella ranks. And now he's shielded, looking to go back in. Oh, Not too much tower thing. damage gain. Baby's in trouble. Baby going to barely heal up in time for it. Cataclysm going to come out. That's going to stun on Zatman and Best, but Shing's in a lot of trouble here. Force a hand that gives him enough HP to live. What a play by Shing. Just barely getting out of that one. That was not a fist. That was level one hand. That's a 90-second cooldown now at level one. But still, Dignitas does some damage. They take the mid camp, and they manage to escape. Allied goes down in that. 10 to 9 right now. Dignitas still behind by 2,600. Dignitas has their work cut out for him, but they have, you know, 
decent farm on the right gods. Zatman, Last of Anatoly, all doing fairly well for themselves, all in the five-digit farm mark. They're not tremendously far behind Snipe outside of Incontinentia, who is just way ahead of Shadow Q, just a beast on this Geb. And his build is something to really look at as well. Shoes of Focus plus Winged One giving him plenty of CDR to get those ultimates out. And we've seen them, in fact, have two in a single engagement. So that build is doing numbers and numbers of work for, uh, for the gentleman of Snipe right now. It's Incon is just a huge factor. I mean, level 17 on support right now. He's actually tied with his own jungler. And then you go across the way, he's tied with the enemy jungler, who's also the highest farm on the team. Maybe not the highest level, but 10,700 puts him on top. And that's what we're seeing over on the left side as well. You see Nick, 11,300, and they're pressuring a lot. Uh, Zatman, uh, I'm sorry, rather, Lass is just barely dodging the blink fearless combination. The Banish is going to miss as well. Uh, just a few whiffs. Zatman and Allied nowhere to be found, but Zab's rotating over. I think Allied's going to take this chance to try to push down. The mid-camps are getting taken by Zap. Uh, Allied's going to back off here, and I guess no attempt's going to happen at the Fire Giant. We have a wash. Yeah, yeah. Allied not too confident in being able to push up. If they don't have any deep wards on the left side there for him to go up to that and aggress that tier 2, even with his ultimate. It's still a little too dangerous. World Weaver plus the, the really, I think, the... You know, the lockdown capabilities that come out from Shadow Q if he gets him into the Cat Stun plus Knock Up. It's just, you know, a decent amount of burst damage you can put out, and Lass is perfectly good at chasing him down with the Valkyrie's discretion. So, uh, it's a, uh, it, it looks like it's going to be now he is feeling it, though, with a blue buff going and a fight about to break out in the mid lane as the team's posture up around, uh, well, what looks like to be the, uh, the mid camp's going to be respawning here shortly. You know, Nick actually does get banished there. He gets World Weaver, but Incon again with the shield was perfect. But oh, Incon this, this time is not on the right side of the map. Anatoly's getting chased now, but the gold here is getting taken. Anatoly doesn't even die. They yeah. need to fire giant. It was free to, uh, you know, they had Allied who was just recalled in the left side lane as that gold period attempt started. So a free gold period goes the way of the boys of Dignitas, and that's actually really good for them. It brings a gold difference pretty much into a uh, negligible state, about a thousand gold, and helps them out in experience as well. The team fight's going to start to break out. The Cataclysm only going to find Lass is here. I don't think they're going to have the burst damage to shut him down, though. Uh, Wolfie's trying to get their Shin crash in as well. Nick, they spent a lot, though, getting to the back lines to kill there. Best throws out the ultimate. He's going to go down to Wolfie. Fight still going the way of Snipe for the moment, but it looks like it's going to turn for Dig here. Oh, I don't think so. Check it out right there. Death Scythe, Silence, Baby's down. Lawbringer, Fearless, Power Clean, he's gone too. Shing absolutely turned that fight around. He baited two people, goes up into the air, turns his sights around. They find three kills instantaneously, and then turn around. They finish off Anatoly as well. Now, the only person up right now is Shadow Q. Now, Wolfie blinks behind. He's looking for something. Shadow's just trying to get in there. He's going to get silenced. He's going to get hit by a few more shots there. He goes down as well. And now Incontinentia is going to give away the aggro here. It looks like to Allied, who's still sitting at full health. Free Fire Giant. Snipe has a command. Yeah, a, a just wonderful fight there. I mean, it looked like it was about to turn for Digitas when the rotation came in from Vamana, but it just wasn't enough. Totally not really having a damage hit him on top of Haste and Fatalis yet. Having to go Magi's Blessing to make himself unpeelable in some of these situations and, and to deal with maybe the Nyx knockup or Wolfie's fearless combo. And so it's going to be, you know, maybe another seven or eight minutes before he's going to get his damage item out, likely to be some kind of crit item or even a, a pen item just to increase his damage. But... He's not really being a force to contend with here. In fact, putting out about 12k player damage, leading his team, but is quite a bit behind where Wolfie is as that frontline bruiser solo role. So, we're 26 minutes in. There's three tier 2 towers left up for Dignitas. Uh, one tier 1 left up there uh, for Snipe, but we're, we're going to have an engagement here. Double fearless power cleave with the shield on. Wolfie's taken for free. Another fearless power cleave going up. Shing oh. is just barely going to miss. So, so close there, DM. Now they're going to turn their attention to Lassus to try to zone him out of this fight. He was looking for a bit of a flank there. No dice for Snipe. Anatoly forced to use his sprint now, and they're going to keep Vamana out of this for now, and that's going to be enough for them to aggress the mid-Phoenix here as the Continent is going to start taking this thing up. They are looking for the base right here, right now. Dignitas is a five-man. We can have a ten-man fight coming out here any second, as Snipe looks like they want to try to disengage this one. It got low, but look at the damage Ally just took. He has the shield up, uh, but that'll be down in a few seconds. Honestly, this is Dig's chance to push. The stone shield's on cooldown. They used a few of the ultimates. They're actually only hovering death, but Wolfie is caught. Jingabang just a little bit too early there, but Wolfie super low. He's not getting out of that one. 
Cataclysm only going to hit the tank there. I'm sure they're not happy about that one. And finally, the baby is colossal jumping in there. What's Nick going to do here? Crushing Wave's going to hit, but it's not enough damage. Ally turn on his heels as well, and it's always going to back off, but Shadow Q's in there. Incontinentia just trying to get to the back line, but he gets forced out. Shadow Q is going to be in trouble. Shin gets another chance at this. Who does he go for? He finds the baby, but he's going to get picked off as well. Last is super low, going to be picked off by Ally. The best no mana. Shadow Q getting low on health, and Allied's jumping in for the kill. Allied wants to find two here. He's going to go deep. They're going to have to fight through that raw blessing, though. Shield coming on to Allied. Not enough auto attacks landed. No attempt to continue in there. Fire Giant buff, really the only thing that wins Snipe that extended fight. The HP region keeping them in it. Well fought by Dignitas, and they save their middle Phoenix. I can't believe they were able to keep that thing up. It was down to like 20%. And they did turn them out. I mean, the hovering death was on cooldown. You know, they were able to burst down enough to make Geb get out of there. He reuses the stone shield on Ally, but it just wasn't enough to keep them in there. Once that was on cooldown, Dig turned around, blew them out of the base. A two-for-two two trade while defending a Phoenix. Granted, they did lose a tower, but we're 28 minutes into the game. 4,500 gold separates. Honestly, I think that was in favor of Dig. Yeah, no, no, no. And even trade for them is 100% a win at this point in the game, considering how much they are down. And just once again, I know we're harping on this point, but Incontinentia, four nearly five levels ahead of Shadow Q at this point. <laughs> this kid, I mean, man. Using rollout just so effectively to maintain kind of experience range in as many lanes as possible and doing a great job of it. And now he's going to be building into Midgarian Mail, an item we almost never see, but is a really, really good answer to a Hasten Fatalis, baby. So, Snipe's almost capped out on here, experience here. Shing's level 19. He's very close at this point. Incontinentia's 19. Across the way, Shadow Q still three levels behind. The best in Lassus. Uh, well, actually, Lassus is even the best a little bit behind as well. But they're trying to get something done here. Incontinentia dives to the tower. Stone Shield's going to be on cooldown. They don't gain anything from it. The Death Scythe was whiffed as well. But look at this now. Two Magi's Blessings. They're going to be able to jump into the back line. Anatoly is really looking for a chance to lay waste. Yeah, he wants he wants to find, you know, at least someone to get the river dance up on and, and force a fight. I mean it looks like it looks like Dignitas wants to fight here. I mean the way they're roaming is five, they're they're looking for an engagement, they're not trying to spread the map out and farm or even take a free gold fury here. They're looking for the fight and you know, I think that they can take it, but it's it's both teams are so dangerous to each other. They both have Really, at this point in the game, the burst potential to take out a single god almost instantly. Either of the assassins could fall off the map nearly instantaneously. Um, Dignitas posturing up for a gold fury attempt here. Now, it is it is going to be spotted out by this ward. They're going to counter ward it, but Snipe knows they're here. It looks like uh, we're going to have a fight at the gold fury as Wolfie is looking for this blink. <laughs> Wolfie actually gets tagged and cannot blink as he's put into combat by Anatoly's umbrella rang from the back. He looks a little frustrated. He looks behind him. He's like, oh, man. <laughs> but he's going to be blacked out. Um, Dignitas just putting more pressure on. Now, when we saw the Gold Fury go down the last time, uh, Snipe answered by going for the Fire Giant. They didn't get it, though. They engaged, which means we still have a little bit of time uh, before the Fire Giant comes up. Of course, we're sitting on a six-second timer, but Incontinent is in there, ready to push. Last is going to find Allied here. The moves are going to be used on top of Beads. Anatoly popping Sprint. He's going to take some damage. He's in big baby form, but Incontinent is there, ready for the push. Shing is already down. Wolfie's fighting four, while Anatoly just pushes out the rest of the team. Great play right big there pin, from big Dignitas. Pin. Big pin from Zapman's going to keep tier forcing the Lawbringer to come out. Not going to have that initiation tool available. Dignitas can now aggress this mid tower or look for an objective. What are they going to do? And it's only rotating around. It looks like it's going to be Fire Giant for Team Dignitas. He's just respawned in the last 10 seconds, and this could be big for them. Incon, however, is still up and running. Hand 3 is going to be available, and it's going to be tough to keep him out and deny him from an attempt here. Looks like they're trying to bait it out, but they missed the pin. And, you know, Dignitas, have they just taken too long now as the rest of Snipe is going to try to make it here for this contest? Incon's working his way in there. The best getting ready to defend. They're going to leash the Fire Giant and chase down the God of Earth. But at the same time, look at the damage Shadow Q has taken. Cataclysm is going to do some work there. Zatman is already gone. Shadow Q's decoy is gone as well. Anatoly sitting on his left legs. Blink into Big shot. Going to be good. Blink. What a blink there. Combat Blink used. Now they're going to turn on the lasses. Incon just needs one more knock to secure this. There it is. Crashing down his allied senpai. And he finds himself another kill. A 4 for nothing trade. Well, Shing did go down earlier on there. He is back up and running. And this could very well be the game for Snipe Gang. Dignitas on their heels. Let's talk about Incontinentia's ability to stop five people by himself from doing Fire Giant. 
He has saved so many lives in this game. He has pushed into so many objectives. He stole the gold fury. And now with five people dead and nothing to stop them, the first semifinal game of week six is going to go down. Snipe's going to take it. GG. GG, well played indeed, and you know, I think it, it's a little bit of a, uh, it, just a really, really solid draft from Snipe. They really put together a nice team here, and, and the danger was what we predicted it would be. Uh, Allied, Wolfie, and Shing, their damage potential with the backup of Geb, able to keep either, or really any of those targets alive during the team fight. And also, a very crafty CDR build here for Incontinentia, going winged one and uh, cooldown boots there, so uh, all around Geb. The story of this game 3 0 at 15 sitting at level 20 gets four levels on sun wukong shadow key really denied this game i can't stop looking at shadow q's stats i mean 14,000 damage done as the support with a 3 0 15 marker yeah, in not to mention he's... not to mention he stole the gold fury by himself yes. he just took that thing stopped the fire giant took the fire giant he was everywhere is it in 